So a very important concept to understand is how you buy and consume cloud resources from Terramark in the enterprise cloud. The model is very different from the commodity cloud brokers or the public cloud models that most vendors employ. Uh, most people require you to form a relationship with their cloud based on the number of VMs or virtual machines that you want to deploy. And the VMs themselves are fairly constrictive, right? You can get a small one, a medium one, a large one, an extra large one, and you can choose from maybe three or four different operating system choices. And, and if your needs and your requirements for your application don't fall into that set of parameters, then it's going to be hard for you to do business and move your workloads to that provider. Either that or you're going to have to alter dramatically Dramatically, the way you write and deploy your applications in order to participate in that cloud service provider solutions. Enterprise Cloud was architected around meeting the needs of enterprise customers. And enterprise customers have uh, long established relationships with tools and deployments and applications in their, in their shop that they're not going to get rid of anytime soon. Second, they need a platform that can support a wide range of diversity. Right? There has to be a lot of different operating system support uh, and size and types of VM in order to get things right. Third, you have to be able to have some control over the environment so that you can create a predictable environment where performance is predictable, the amount of resources you have available to you is predictable, uh, and the ability to dictate the performance of your environment uh, is again in your control. So usually in a commodity cloud environment, you take your virtual machine and you deploy it. And when you deploy it, you have very little insight into where it goes, right? It goes somewhere on a physical server in the, in the architecture, but you don't usually get to choose what that server is, and you don't really get to choose what other customers are on that server. And because of workload variability, your performance of an individual virtual machine can vary wildly from day to day because the cloud operator has the option of either loading up or not loading up the physical server that you happen to reside on with multiple virtual machines. Because of that, you get workload unpredictability in terms of performance, and sometimes response time is different, and sometimes even the bandwidth between nodes changes. So because you have little control over that, the output can be uncomfortable. In the enterprise cloud, instead of forming a relationship around the virtual machines, enterprise cloud is sold to customers in compute pools. And a compute pool is made up of a set of resources, usually measured in gigahertz and gigabytes. And so what happens is you will decide on a size of your compute pool. Uh, in the case of what we have demonstrated on the screen here, this customer has chosen 10 gigahertz of processing power and 20 gigabytes of memory. Now inside that 10 gigahertz of processing power and 20 gig of memory, you can build and create and destroy as many virtual machines as you want to. Those virtual machines can be very small in terms of their amount of gigahertz consumed and very large in terms of memory, or they could be completely equal, or it could be skewed toward the gigahertz and not the memory. The, the point is the customer gets to dictate that entire um, deployment strategy of how their applications lay out. Second, the hypervisor that we've chosen is VMware. And VMware, um, in our environment, we allow you to deploy any virtual machine that has a driver in VMware. Uh, currently, that means we support over 450 different operating system versions um, that you can deploy in today. So what you get is a, is a diversity of choice that you can't usually find at other service providers. The third thing that the compute pool concept gives you is control. Um, when you buy a 10 gigahertz, 20 gigabyte package or compute pool inside of our environment, we're going to absolutely guarantee that that minimum amount of processor and memory is available to you at all times. We're never going to take part of your compute pool and give it to another customer because they happen to be consuming more at any one point in time or not. We're never going to arbitrage your gigahertz and gigabytes against our system to try to improve our performance. We're always going to deliver to you what we've committed in terms of the processor and memory that we have. Now if you happen to deploy resources that consume more than what you've committed to, we do give customers the ability to exceed the compute pool size, and that's a feature we call burst. So let's say, for example, you've deployed um, a variety of resources, and those resources are at low utilization rates, but then a spike occurs, or, or an event occurs where the amount of business or traffic goes up dramatically. Um, how would you handle that? Well, if your application um, can auto-scale and has, is built to actually automatically scale out horizontally, that's one way to approach it. Another way is to literally make available to your compute pool more gigahertz and gigabytes than you've contracted for. And the way you do that in this um, environment is through what we call bursting. 
So for example, on the processor side of the house, you'll see that the button um, where the burst is enabled it says enable burst, right? Whereas the button on the memory side says disable burst. So currently this is configured so that the memory can burst up as high as it wants to, but the processor can only go to the 100% mark. It can only go to the 10 gigahertz that you've contracted for at this moment in time. If you want to enable burst, it's very simple. You click on the button. Clicking on the button will then bring up a dialog box, which will show you the costs associated with using the burst pool. Now notice that en enabling the burst uh, processor burst will cost $300 per gigahertz if your usage goes over your purchase limit. The $300 per gigahertz is a monthly charge. The charge for burst is actually calculated on a five minute increment. So if you burst for five to 10 minutes, you'll only pay for five to 10 minutes of time in the burst pool. You will not have to pay the full monthly committed rate for a gigahertz just because you encroached in the burst pool for a short amount of time. Similarly, if you choose to disable burst, a dialog box will come up as well and show you that disabling this feature will return your resources back to your committed levels. Again, we give the customer full access to make this choice. So it's a very cost-effective way for you to get more resources on an as-needed basis versus buying too large of a compute pool environment and winding up uh, underutilizing the resources. On the main screen, you'll also see a graphic depiction of where your resource utilization stands at this moment in time. And you'll notice that the cylindrical bars on there uh, represent the utilization that you have in the environment. So that utilization is based on either the active VMs that are running in your environment or a comparison of all virtual machines running in your environment. You'll also notice that the green bar surrounding it actually changes over time as well. And in fact, it indicates what the maximum requirement would be if you were to turn on all of your virtual machines and all of the virtual processing units simultaneously and ran them at 100 percent. So you can see that in this environment, even though I've purchased 10 gigahertz of processing power, I've actually deployed 30 virtual machines with a total of 45 virtual processing units, which if all turned on at once could consume as much as 126 and a half gigahertz of processing power. This means that you as the customer have the power of over allocation. You can decide how much or how little you want to allocate inside your compute pool. This gives you control over the performance of the environment and most importantly, the utilization of the assets in the environment. You don't have to tune and measure each individual virtual machine to reach a certain threshold. You can aggregate all the utilization of any VM at any point in time and either over or under allocate that based on what you're willing to do uh, in the environment. But of course, Terramark has cloud enablement experts on staff who sit down with your IT department and help understand what your requirements are and help you figure out how to appropriately size the compute pool for the requirements that you have for your applications. Thanks for listening. To find out more information about the enterprise cloud or to chat with a cloud expert, visit Terramark.com.